our first speaker, um, except that I have forgotten his last name. Fisher. <laughs> this is Steve Fisher, and um, he's going to come and talk to us a lot about how the reforms that are on the table right now would affect us as consumers of health insurance and also affects the entire structure of how health insurance is done right now. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon. How are you? Good to see everybody here. It would be nice to see this place filled with people, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, my name is Steve Fisher. Just to give you a little bit of the background, I'm an insurance agent. I've been in the business for 25 years. Um, I basically do employee benefits, so health insurance. Obviously, this is a great concern to me. To give you a little bit more of a background, I take this very seriously. I'm president of the Health Underwriters from Northwestern Pennsylvania. I serve on the State Association and I've served on three national committees with the National Association. Uh, so I, I've got an extensive background and an understanding of what goes into health insurance, uh, including the administrative side, because for 10 years I ran a couple of uh, managed care programs, PPOs, HMOs, point of service plans. So I do have an understanding of what we're facing right now, and uh, I'm not really happy with the direction that they're taking some things. So people say, well, yeah, you're an insurance agent. Obviously, you're going to be concerned. You're concerned about your future and losing your income. You know what? That's part of it. That's not my major concern. My major concern is I have three children and a grandson, and I'm concerned about the future that's facing them and their generations because right now, uh, it's a little bleak. And I think that we need to try to give them something a little bit more exciting to look forward to versus what we're facing right now. So that's the main reason I'm getting involved with this. Plus, like I said, I don't really believe that what the government is looking to do is in the best interest country or the citizen. So I'm going to be sharing some different information with you. Um, how many of you watched the president last week when he gave his speech? Okay, I see some hands. How about the next morning when he talked with the nurses? Did any of you watch that? Okay, I did as well. And there was something that I pulled out of it that he said, and I don't know if you picked this part up, but he said, and he made it very clear, and the quote was, if you mis misrepresent what's in the plan, we will call you out, all right? He said that over and over and over. Well, today you're going to hear me call the president out a few times because I don't think that he's going to call the president. One of the quotes that he had was he said, more and more Americans pay their premiums only to discover that their insurance company has dropped their coverage when they get sick or won't pay the full cost of care. It happens every day. And then he also commented that uh, coverage can be terminated because you've developed a serious illness. Well, again, Mr. President, I know you're down in Pittsburgh. If you can hear me, I'm calling you out. Because that's not really the way the insurance industry works. Not if you're working with reputable carriers, at least. And I can tell you a quote that I just pulled out of the brochure of one of our carriers. This is their newest brochure. We just got them last week. It says right in it, there's no rate increases based on your claims. You can't be singled out for a rate increase or have your coverage canceled due to your age, health, or how much medical care you may need. So. The president's using a lot of comments like that as fear tactics. You know, they're scare tactics to make us worry about what we have, thinking that it won't be there when we need it. And quite frankly, it's not true. Okay, there are people that have some problems with claims, but it's not as bad as he's making it seem. Um, it's also, you know, when I look at other carriers, that was one, but all of the carriers that we represent, they treat it the same way. Same with group insurance. Now, group insurance, yes, if there's claims, the group can be adjusted accordingly, but on the individual side, they can't. But as long as the group pays their premium, they won't be canceled. So again, that's something that he's using that's scaring some people. He also said, uh, the next day, he said, um, people are fearful as there are no caps on their out-of-pocket expenses. Again, Mr. President, if you can hear me, I call you out. That's not true. The individual products that we sell, most of them have $1,000 or $1,500 out-of-pocket maximum. Group plans are very similar to that. Some people are getting higher deductibles, higher co-insurance now, so they're going to have some, but they all have caps on them. I've had clients that have had a million dollars in claims that have only paid a few hundred dollars out of pocket. So again, I think he's trying to disrupt what we already have with some statements that aren't quite true. I forget the two words that somebody yelled out during his speech and they got in trouble for it, but yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> In some cases, those two words are very accurate. So uh, again, Mr. President, we'll call you out on those. I also heard him comment, and this is an important one, that he said the number of uninsured have increased over the past 12 months, while the number of people covered under an employer group have decreased during the same time. Well, no kidding. Most of those that have lost their group coverage is because they've lost their jobs where they work. 
And I don't see them doing anything yet to help us create new jobs. And I think that his administration needs to start focusing on that more because when we start creating more jobs, people will again get insurance through work. So um, very important, but you can't blame the insurance industry on the loss of those jobs necessarily. Uh, let me see what else is. Oh, well, getting back to health care just a little bit. In my opinion, if we're going to have health care reform, and I know we need to make some changes to what we currently have, there are some problems out there. I have people every week that come in, want to buy insurance, are willing to pay the premiums, but no carriers will take them because of their health issues. They're individuals. We do have to correct that problem, whether it's a high-risk pool or what. Um, there is coverage that's available. It's very expensive for them, and they have waiting periods, so we do have to work on that. But if we're going to have health care reform, in my opinion, it has to be making sense for all Americans, but without sacrificing quality, restricting care or rationing like some use, or bankrupting our country. And again, the proposals that I've seen out there, I don't think are taking care of any one of those. My biggest concern is bankrupting our country with it. So um, we do need people to show up at events like this and let them know how you feel about it. They talk about the number of uninsured that are out there. Uh, normally it's been 46 to 47 million. When the president was talking, he was talking 30 million. And I looked into the fact checks and all those, and some of the reasons they gave for that is they said that he wanted to use a lesser amount so people could discount the number for those who choose not to buy insurance, who have it available to them. So he lessened it to 30 million. The fact of the matter is it's not even close to that. When you look at the long-term uninsured, People that are without insurance for a long period of time, it's generally in the 9 to 11 million range, somewhere around there. It's about 3% of our population. So the question we have to ask is, do we want to throw out what we currently have that's working well for the majority of the population to try to fix what isn't working for the 3%? I don't think we throw it out. Uh, I was telling somebody earlier, two weeks ago, I had an opportunity to sit down with a physician from Brussels. And she's very involved with their government program over there. And her comment to me was, much of what they're doing right now, they've copied from the United States. And the other comment she made to me was, she said, you know, when we're having our discussions, we're saying when we look at what America's trying to do, we think they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And that's coming from a foreign country. Okay? And I tend to believe that, that we can't get rid of what we have, let's fix what we have. But when you look at that 9 to 10 or 11 million, when you look at these studies that are being done on the plans that the government's proposing for us, they're generally saying that we will still have at least 3% of the population without insurance. So if we have 3% without insurance long term now and we'll end up with 3% without insurance long term then, why go through it? Why go into debt as far as they're talking about over a 10 year period if we're not going to be really insuring everybody? So again, I think they have to slow down with what they're working on because it's Otherwise, it's my children and grandson and your grandchildren and children that are going to be paying for all of that debt. Uh, the other thing is, if the public option was put into place and they don't believe that we're real, I mean, if you heard the two million people that were just down in Washington, some of them that are in office down there said, yeah, yeah but that's not the real America. <laughs> yes, we're down here, but we don't have to pay attention to them. I and mean, that's exactly what they're saying. It's not real Americans that came down here to protest. They're mobs, you know? No, I've been doing a number of these meetings in different places and talking to tea parties, and I'm seeing young, I'm seeing old, I'm seeing Democrats, Republicans, independent, libertarians. I'm sorry, I think this is a good mix of America, and everybody's a little bit concerned about what's taking place. If a public option were to be approved, and they're really seriously talking about doing this with the reconciliation process and saying they can do it regardless of anybody else, the Lewin Group did a study for the Heritage Foundation, and they said in Pennsylvania, 51% of Pennsylvanians would be forced to transition out of private insurance. 59% of Pennsylvanians with employer-based coverage would be shifted out of their current plan. And 32%, one-third of the uninsured in Pennsylvania would still lack coverage. If we